I just love fishing on Cape Cod. We're just a few miles off the outer Cape. There's whales, birds, tuna, lights. This is fish number three. Oh, right here. <laughs> Where do I cast? <laughs> Oh, he's boiled on it. I just had a tuna boil on it. We're definitely in a lot of fish. We got a couple of humpbacks, a couple of minke whales in the mix, but we're in pretty thick fog today, not good visibility. Um, this radar got us into the area, and now we're within a bunch of you know feeding groups of fish. A lot of shear waters on them, a lot of minke whales, a lot of humpbacks. Picked up these birds at about three miles, um, but you can see the various groups that we have out around the boat. This radar really helps us out here in the fog today. You know, we got a large amount of shear waters on the fish, so they're a dead giveaway at long distance with the radar. So we got two groups behind us on either side, and I mean, there's groups all the way out as far as you can see in the distance, so big body of fish are on. Pretty exciting to see to start the season. Now, the beauty of fishing with these heavy sliders is the action's really built into the lure. So it's really a plug and play retrieve. It's, uh, I would say, between a slow, medium, and a medium fast retrieve. Um, I tend to change the, um, the retrieve speed throughout the throughout each cast. So then I'll let it sink just for a little bit. The beauty again of these heavy lures is it can get under the bird. So when the birds swoop down on the first portion of the cast, I'm just gonna let it sink for three, maybe five seconds. Even if I see fish cruising, that extra time down could prevent a bird hookup and, a missed, and create a missed opportunity for the fish. So now I'm just gonna do a nice slow to medium retrieve and uh, again, with this six ounce hoagie slider, I'm gonna be down under the surface. And with a slow retrieve, you're pretty much bird free with these. And uh, so slow, medium, pause, I'm gonna let the lure sink there. Designed for a uniform descent, that means the lure is gonna sink in a horizontal fashion, very natural presentation. Then if I know I'm in an area and there's fish to help create a reaction strike, I might speed it up for a second and pause then go back to my medium so my medium retrieve. So that intermittent sort of change in speeds um, really helps create an erratic nature to the lure. Meanwhile, when you retrieve it, it's gonna have a nice wobble through the water. So we're in a very dense bait situation. There's obviously a lot of tuna here, but they're keyed in on massive bait balls. And I find in situations where there's just super dense amounts of bait, it can be difficult to find these fish blind casting. Anytime we've got near the fish and under the birds, we've been able to hook up pretty easily. They're wanting a slow retrieve of these heavy plugs. So rather than drift and blind cast, which is often a very favorite technique of mine in this situation, today we're just cruising around. We're using a technique that I would call walk and gun. So we're cruising around very slow, so we're nimble and agile on our feet. We don't have lines in the water. So if we do see a school of fish push up and feed, you know, our lines are in, we're already in gear, and we're ready to walk to the fish rather than charging all over creation. And uh, it creates a much lower impact as far as boat traffic on these fish. So we're idling around right now. We're going about 10 knots, and we're keeping an eye on all the birds and schools and whales and we're just going from bubble feed to bubble feed where it looks interesting. And meanwhile, the entire time, we're poised to cast and target these fish. They want the, again, they want these lures right on their noses. And here we go. Go, go. Oh, he just had a, he just rolled on your lure, dude. I got him. You got him? Yep. JB's hooked up. That's a huge fish. Yeah. That was a huge fish? I think. It's hard to tell. I saw him roll. John's up in the bow. Got a better fish on here for sure. Um, you know, he's got to stretch out pretty far, so we're in. We're just trying to gain some line back and keep the fish under control. I'm gonna let him run around a little bit in the beginning before we lock the drag down on him. So the hoagie slider six ounce has been the name of the game today. This is our second fish. 
JB put that lure on because the bird action is very heavy and the six ounce weight of the slider was getting under the birds once we made that switch. We've been hooking up. This is our second fish. John's getting a little tired. This is a sizable fish, so he's probably going to hand off the rod at any given moment. And uh, here we go. And I am hooked up. I'll let John do the uh, hard work. And I just hold the rod, look pretty for a minute, and then uh, there goes all that hard work. So I'm just constantly putting pressure on this fish. Remember, if you're taking a break, so, the fi so is the fish. Big fish, lots of drag. We didn't test the drag, but I'd say this is easily 13 pounds of drag on this reel. Doesn't sound like much, but when you factor the rod and everything, it's a good amount of pressure. And this fish is just going. So what Colin's gonna do is back off a little bit and give a little distance between the boat in the running line and that does two purposes one it changes the angle to a more advantageous one for us fighting the fish and two keeps the line away from the boat yeah we got him we got the fish straight up and down here and you know he's sitting about 100 120 feet and he's kind of settled in now so i'm just trying to back off him give the guys up in the bow fighting him a better angle so it's not crushing their backs um, and hopefully he comes out of that circle he's in and he gets up top and we get the harpoon on him. And one thing is we're meticulous about the leaders. If we lose a fish on a leader we swap it out, pay big attention, very careful attention to our crimps, our hardware and with this setup there's a hundred pound test hollow core on this outfit. I believe this is John's rod and a 100 pound test fluorocarbon casting leader. So you can put a fair amount of pressure on this fish and towards the end of the battle, that can help get the fish tor turned towards us. Oh, he's up on the surface. About to go back up, he's running up. So we've been handing this fish back and forth. Um, John's obviously a very strong guy, but one thing we like to do is hand the rod off before you get tired. That way no one's making any mistakes, everyone's very fresh. So, say if you can last 30, 40 minutes on a rod before you need to hand it off when you get tired, hand it off in half that time. That way everybody's always sharp when they're fighting a fish. It's, these are big fish on spinning gear, so you really want to uh, you know, be smart about it and get these fish in quickly. Um, for two reasons. One, if you're going to keep the fish, you'll have better odds of getting it in the quicker you land it. Number two, if you're going to release the fish, the faster you land it, the quicker you release it, the healthier the fish is going to be. It's coming up. The fish is close. Colin's getting the harpoon ready. So Colin has done that once or twice. Here we go. Go grab that gaff on the other side of the boat. Grab that gaff. Nice and slow. And it just pretty much went down to textbook on this one. 
You saw the fish, you led the fish. First cast, we used the heavy lure, got under the birds, just half a dozen cranks, we were tight. Fish didn't last that long, we were 45 minutes before you stuck this fish and here we are. Yeah, I think uh, I think the heavy slider was the key to this morning because we had you know 100, 200 shear water than each pile of fish. So um, you know we started off hooking a couple of fish, we switched to that, and that was the ticket for sure. The last three hookups, awesome morning, ton of ton of action. There's a lot of fish that finally moved in the herds here. So let's go get back after it. Yeah, there's like a zillion birds out there, and uh, I'm acting calm, cool, and collected right now for the close. But uh, we got to get back at it now.